All right, the first part of the tutorial, we're going to be uh, drawing the brachial plexus using a mnemonic courtesy of Mark Nielsen from Department of Biology. Thank you, Mark. Here is a picture of the brachial plexus, which is a collection of nerves that are extensions from the ventral rami from C5 through T1. The mnemonic is, you young mermaids line up in front of Poseidon's ultra trident, LSD, salt, made many mermaids undergo mass misery. So. If you can memorize this mnemonic, you can draw and label this picture. Uh, start. You, you draw the letter Y. Young, draw another uh, letter Y. Mermaids, you take an M and you draw it at the end of those two Ys. Next one, you young mermaids, line up. There's a line and it goes up. In front of Poseidon's ultra trident. What is in front of? Well, the line up is in front of Poseidon's ultra trident. There's the trident. So we look at those words, ultra. We then write in or put in these letters. U, L, T, R, A. Those, that spells ultra. And each of those letters represent the following nerves. Upper subscapular nerve, which innervates part of the subscapularis muscle. Lower subscapular nerve, that also innervates the other part of the subscapularis in addition to the teres major. And between them is the thoracodorsal nerve that innervates the latissimus dorsi. It's sometimes called middle subscapular because it's in the middle. Next, we have the radial nerve, and this is going to innervate uh, posterior arm and posterior forearm muscles. And then finally, the axillary nerve that innervates the deltoid and the uh, teres minor. In addition, radial and ulnar do some sensory uh, innervation as well. So, period. LSD, and we go L, S, and Shing D. There we go. So the L stands for the lateral pectoral nerve that innervates your pec major. And then our suprasubscapular, little, suprascapular nerve that innervates our supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. And then the dorsal scapular nerve that's going to innervate uh, levator scapulae and our two rhomboid muscles. Salt. So let's put these next letters in for S, A, and L, T. So, S for subclavian nerve, yeah, I don't care if you remember that one. And A for accessory phrenic nerve, yeah, I don't care if you remember that one either. But the long thoracic nerve for LT, I do because this is the nerve that courses superficial to the serratus anterior and provides innervation to that muscle. LSD salt made many mermaids. M, shing, M, shing, and M, shing. There we go. So these three M's are for medial pectoral nerve that innervates your pec minor and pec major. I'm not sure why I keep bringing my voice down for these, but uh, medial pectoral nerve that pierces through the pec minor and then into the pec major. You might remember dissecting that out in phase one. The next M over is the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, which provides cutaneous sensation to the medial part of the arm. And then our medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which provides cutaneous innervation to the medial part of the forearm. Undergo mass misery. U, M, M. The U stands for ulnar nerve, which provides innervation to the flexor carpi ulnaris and half of the flexor digitorum profundus, as well as to most of the intrinsic hand muscles. The middle M stands for median nerve. And the median nerve is going to innervate most of the forearm flexors and the thenar muscles and the lateral two lumbricals. In addition, there's the musculocutaneous nerve, which is going to innervate all the muscles of the anterior compartment of the arm. So here we have now that the parts of this brachial plexus in different colors, where the, uh, the roots of the brachial plexus is what we describe the ventral rami from C5 all the way down to T1. So this is one of those uh, pieces of jargon that's sometimes difficult for students. We call these the roots of the brachial plexus. They really are the ventral rami, uh, but we call them the roots of the brachial plexus. So C5 and C6 roots give rise to the superior trunk. Then the C7 ventral ramus just changes names and we call it the middle trunk and C8 and T1 roots become the inferior trunk and the superior middle and inferior trunks now all bifurcate. Each one of those trunks bifurcate into divisions where each of these trunks gives rise to a branch that goes to ventral musculature flexors and dorsal musculature extensors. So our anterior division, these are all going, going to become 
uh, branches and nerves that go to flexors or f anterior compartment of the arm, forearm, or hand muscles. Then the posterior compartment, these are branches that are going to go to nerves that are going to go to the back of the arm, forearm um, of the upper limb. Now, each of these divisions further give rise to cords, <clears throat> each of them receiving their names to their relationship to the axillary artery. Lateral cord is lateral to the axillary artery, and the medial cord is medial, and our posterior cord is deep to it. And you see some branches coming off of these cords. Finally, these cords are going to give rise to branches. So the lateral cord gives rise to musculocutaneous nerve and part of the median nerve, and that the um, medial cord gives rise to the ulnar nerve in addition to the median nerve. That posterior cord gives rise to a radial nerve as well as the axillary nerve. So here we have that brachial plexus. We have its roots, its trunks, its divisions, cords, and finally branches. And to remember these five parts of the brachial plexus, many students use the mnemonic Randy, Travis, drinks, cold, beer, or for those of us who came from BYU, beverages. And so there we have how to memorize that brachial plexus. So here's the picture that you need to be able to draw it, and you need to be able to label it in its entirety. And so when you do that, you'll get the jazz hands because you've done a great feat, and now we're going to go into the rest of the tutorial that talks about its functioning.